Robert Truax is a backyard tinkerer. His garage is loaded with enough gadgets and machines and spare parts to build a rocket ship. In fact, that's exactly what he's doing. Working with surplus military hardware and American ingenuity, Truax has, with other technical experts, been working for four years on his answer to NASA. He calls it the USS Private Enterprise and hopes it will eventually pave the way for privately financed space industrialization. I was one of the first to try to sell NASA on reusable uh, launch vehicles back in the early 60s. And I had an approach which is very simple. Uh, now we have a shuttle which is very complex, and I think that it needs a little competition. So I'm hoping ultimately that this will blossom into a complete orbital uh, transportation system, and then we'll have something with which to compare uh, the shuttle. The rocket is built uh, mainly out of surplus components, uh, some which we use as is, some of which uh, are highly modified. It's 25 feet long, 25 inches in diameter, uh, weighs about 3,000 pounds at takeoff. Uh, will go to a speed of about 2,500 miles an hour, and it's landed by parachute in the water uh, about 10 miles from where it takes off. A retired Navy captain, Truax worked as an aeronautical engineer on scores of military rocket projects and once built a rocket motorcycle for Daredevil Evil Knievel. With the help of financial backers, he's so far spent about a half million dollars on his Volks rocket, but has yet to send the world's first private astronaut into space. There are now some 3,500 people that have applied to fly this thing. I have never hidden the fact that it's going to be more dangerous than a NASA mission. Uh, we're doing this on a shoestring, and uh, we can't cover all the bets as well as NASA does. Okay, here we have the hot seat. This is where the lucky astronaut sits. It's equipped with a, uh, a standard harness normally used for acrobatic type aircraft. Most of the time, he just if everything's going right, he just sits here with this enclosure over him and he looks out through the, these big windows and watches the beautiful scene. We won't let anybody get in it until we've had a completely successful unmanned flight. To some, Truax's lofty goals may seem unrealistic, but his ideas about recoverable spacecraft and about his own role in the space race are strictly down to earth. I am hoping that this will encourage other people to get into the, uh, uh, the overall space act on a private basis and get their private initiative in there. Uh, so that we'll have a diversity of approaches to all kinds of problems. There are thousands of unsolved problems still in the business of, of industrializing and colonizing space. It may be 500 years, it may be 100, only 100 years from now, but I predict that uh, one day there'll be more people living in space than are living on Earth. There she goes. 